it's hard to be original, to come up with your own unique creative ideas. I think that's why so many of us take the same photos as everyone else. This last one's mine. I've struggled with this for years as well, and sometimes it's made me feel like a bit of an imposter. Like, if all I can do is copy others, maybe I'm just no good at this photography thing. Over the last few years though, I've discovered a bit of a trick. I use storytelling as a way to kickstart my creativity. And in this video, I'm gonna break down photos from a recent photo shoot to try and explain exactly how storytelling makes me more creative. A few months ago, we had the opportunity to work with some traditional folkloric dancers. Photographing a different side of Mexican culture is always really exciting for me. It's a chance to explore a totally different world and Folklorico is fascinating. It's like a visual history book with every one of the 150 plus unique dances representing a different chapter in that book. And because of that, it's insanely popular in Mexico. So there are thousands of great photos already out there, which meant I was confronted with my typical pre-photo shoot fear. How on earth do I create something different? Thinking in stories makes a creative process way more fun. The act of creating something from nothing has always scared me. I've never really felt like a creative person, I guess. Most of the time, I felt more like an imposter, and the fear that came with that would freeze me. I'd procrastinate knowing that a new project would require making a thousand different decisions that I just didn't feel qualified to make. Instead of looking within myself for inspiration, I looked entirely outside for ideas and I created derivative and cliched photos, photos without any heart. Storytelling changed that. It turns the focus inwards again. A story sits at the heart of a photo shoot because you have to run every decision through it and that adds focus and direction to the creative process. Most of my photo shoots happen out here in the jungle that surrounds Sayulita. But for the folkloric shoot, I wanted to do something different. I wanted to shoot indoors and I had my heart set on shooting in a theater. There's just one small problem with that. There's no theaters anywhere near here. Dan and I drove around the neighboring towns and villages, location scouting, looking for any place, any building that might work as a stand-in for a theater. And we found this awesome warehouse. This place used to be a sugarcane processing plant in the 1920s, but right now it's being used as a community center. As soon as I walked into this place, I knew it was perfect. And a story idea for the shoot just popped into my head. I pictured a young couple in traditional folkloric dress breaking into this old abandoned theater to live out their fantasy of performing on a stage together. This story might seem silly or insubstantial, and it's actually both of those things, but who cares? No one else will see it. People will only see how the story manifests itself visually in your images. The story is just a tool to inform and focus the creative process, that's all. Now that I had my story, I created a shot list. I broke the story idea into four sections. 
The models entering the building, getting on stage, performing, and finally taking a bow at the end. Under each of these sections are the shots I wanted to create. They're in various stages of progress here, from early ideas like this painting I like, to actual test shots like this one. I wanted the photo of the couple entering the building to capture the feeling of apprehension and excitement that happens when you're doing something you probably shouldn't be, like you know, breaking into an abandoned theater. And that's why I opted for this composition, a wide shot from an elevated perspective. It made the models look small and the space look huge and ominous. Our unconscious mind notices contrasts like this and it adds narrative interest to the image because of that. The light in these test shots is still too dramatic though. I wanted to create a more painterly image, so we added in a 1920s miner's lamp as a practical light source. As well as making the image look more cinematic, this type of lamp matches the time period of the building and also the historical origins of the dance, so it turned out to be a pretty awesome prop, really. Oh yeah, also I wanted to say this miner's lamp is broken, or you know, at least I don't know how to make it work. So I had to tie a speed lamp to the back of it and then stuff some crumpled CTO gel right inside to get that rich orange color that you see in the photos. It worked pretty good. We also added in some haze to create this beautiful triangular framing around the models. Using geometric shapes like this is another great way to create visual interest and draw in a viewer's unconscious mind. I could have lit up the entire space from the inside, but that wouldn't have really said abandoned as much. It would have taken away from the sense of mystery that is in that story idea. And this is actually a nice example of how working with a story guides you in a direction you might not have otherwise gone. This photo was by far the one I was most excited about creating. It's one of those ideas that has potential to create a really interesting composition. It has a distinct foreground, middle ground, and background. And that's one of the best ways to make a photo visually interesting. It's to bring the illusion of depth back into your two-dimensional photo. These three layers do that. Adding in the haze also helps the illusion as it desaturates and decontrasts the background. Decontrasts, I'm not, is that a word? This photo also uses the frame within a frame device. And this adds some nice lines to the image, but mostly what it does is create two moments in one image. The Charo off stage in the shadows is connected by his gaze to the female dancer. The idea is that your brain connects these two moments with an internal narrative. That's what makes it a storytelling image. Once I'm happy that we've got the shot, oh, shut up, birds. Once I'm happy that we've got the shot, I like to spend a bit of time exploring the scene. We've already spent time setting up the lights, so it's worth moving around a bit, trying new ideas out. The story is just a tool after all. It's there to help kickstart the creative process. That's actually what happened here. I was so happy with how the last photo came out that we ended up creating a bunch more just off that positive energy and momentum. Not everything went according to plan, though. The, the last shot was a bit of a disaster. Do we have any other lights? No. My lights started flashing out of sync, which, you know, might be the most infuriating thing ever. I was taking like 10 photos to get just one where all the lights flashed together. And that obviously made my batteries just go 
flat real quick. I never really got a photo I liked for this part of the story. This was probably the best one. Whatever, shit happens. I actually upgraded my entire lighting setup the next day, so that came out of it. <laughs> That's how frustrated I was. I made this video to show how working with a story helps guide my creative ideas in some cool directions. How the story helps answer questions I would have found very hard to answer before. Working with a story means I don't just panic and borrow other people's work. Instead, the story makes me look inside myself for answers. Once I have a story, I funnel every decision through it, and I think that's what keeps my work original. Lastly, working with a story also helps make the creative process more fun, and <laughs> that matters. If you want to have a career in photography to take photos every day, but still love what you do, well, it needs to be fun. Man. <laughs> that's so good. Look, storytelling isn't a better way to take photos. It's slow, it's involved, it's, it's not for everyone, but it's the best way I know how to create original, interesting work, and that's why I like talking about it, and that's why I like doing it. I hope you enjoyed this video.